Welcome to Science Rocks. I'm Laura Spence, K-12 STEM Specialist for Pinellas County Schools. Big growth with the STEM Academies this year, thanks in part to Duke Energy. The Duke Energy Foundation presented a $212,000 check to help fund the STEM Academies in the district. As a result of the additional funding, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics will be able to move students towards a brighter STEM future through innovative learning experiences. The financial support provided by Duke Energy will facilitate the continuation of 112 K-12 after-school STEM academies at 51 Title I schools. The funding will enable each Title I school to offer a minimum of two after-school STEM academies with a potential student impact of more than 2,200 students. Over the past four years, Duke Energy has contributed over $489,000 in support of the Pinellas County Schools STEM Academies, introducing over 4,900 students to STEM and STEM careers. It doesn't just happen. A lot of training and recruitment happen behind the scenes. And it kicks off at the beginning of the school year with our annual STEM Academy Professional Development Training Sessions. We have more than 220 STEM Academy teachers getting ready to open the academies. And is it important that we are all on the same page? Robert, you've been a STEM Academy teacher with us for a couple of years. And I want to know, how do these trainings prepare you to actually teach STEM with your after school academy? Okay, so through the trainings, um, we learn what to actually do with the kids and what projects and activities and so forth that we're going to do. Um, last year we used the engineering design loop and that really helped me a lot, um, especially when we started doing the egg drop challenge because that really helped the kids to design their projects and, and everything. Uh, plus it introduces us to the actual um, curriculum, your upcoming events, um, gets us organized because you're very organized so that helps us to get organized as well. Uh, well, this year hopefully we can push the bar a little bit higher because this is our third year of doing it now, so I would like to see them not only just create the basic stuff, but I would like them to take it to an advanced, more advanced level this year. So that's kind of what we're looking for. These teachers are working together to build the products they will be testing in the classroom with their students. First time? Yeah, I think it's great. It'll give students an opportunity to obviously build something and have a product and be able to use different building materials. Growth has been incredible. At Booker Creek, we started four years ago with one STEM Academy. Now, there are six. Nancy is one of our biggest cheerleaders. Plus, we've expanded into primary grades. The kids there are so excited about this program. Have you guys each look at your cards. You're going to work in your team. You're going to look at your titles. And I'm going to I think the parents the are just excited about the program and it instilled in the children. Plus, yeah. having that yeah. one yeah. academy yeah. four years ago yeah. was like a fire because the other kids heard about it. They wanted to do what we were doing, and it just grew from there, the excitement of the program. Yeah, I never built this before or anything like this, so it's just amazing to build something like this. This is fun because we get to make stuff in STEM. We get to make stuff. Like, now we're making a windmill. I think that the families see the where STEM is going. Science, technology, engineering, and math is the future. And so the kids, the parents support it. They get excited about it. They instill that in their children, and then their children are excited to come. Because it's paper. Whoa! <laughs> Yay. And it is so important to have progression. CarWise piloted the middle school program four years ago. And now, not only do they have a successful STEM Academy following, but have also expanded to a STEM Academy with a robotics focus. I think that we've had a lot of um, parents who've really um, been very supportive and been very involved in doing that. Two years ago um, at our school, we hosted one of the family nights, which was great because it was all of the elementary, it was all the middle school students in the area. 
Um, and that night in our gym, there were probably about 200 people that were there between all of the families and kids. So there was just a tremendous amount of interest at the elementary school level. So then when they're coming in to middle school, knowing that we've had a program that's been really strong for a while, that just continues. We also encourage involvement because when we do um, kind of shark nights to introduce our school to potential to fifth graders who are going to be coming in, our school is very supportive of our STEM program so I always have a table that's there so I can talk and encourage participation um, even before they're actually coming in as sixth graders so they're aware of kind of some of the projects our kids have done and they're just continue to be really interested so we have a really strong support from our community. We've also had members from Lockheed Martin come to talk to our STEM Academy because Lockheed Martin has tried to wind up providing a lot of STEM support to us also so that's kind of a nice community connection. Mm -hmm. So once they punch them out one year you're going to have... You know, our STEM Academy teacher at Oakhurst is also very enthusiastic. She helped to host the STEM summer camps and is bringing some valuable lessons into her academy. Courtney, you've been a STEM Academy teacher for a long time. What sort of opportunities has becoming a STEM Academy teacher opened for you? Yeah, so um, I've been doing STEM now. This is my third year, but over the summer I had the opportunity to actually facilitate the STEM summer camp for four weeks. And it was an awesome opportunity. I was exposed to Lego robotics. Um, we did all sorts of fun STEM team building activities as well and now I'm able to actually use those robotics in my classroom and I'm super excited for this new school year too. Now let's go into the classroom and so see her in action. Four different types of gray and black pieces that you can plug into the computer and these allow your Legos to operate. I think it's just very similar with the kids working, you know, being able to see it first and play with it and then being able then to go and implement it, I think is so beneficial. Had I not had the training, I wouldn't have had that background knowledge to run these programs successfully with my kids. You have a lot of students that have come back to you year after year and even participate when you're teaching the STEM summer camps. How has that been for you? Oh, it's been awesome. I love seeing their growth and even watching them learn more and more every time, even if they've done the same thing, just watching them you know, learn something different from doing the same thing, is it's just awesome to watch. We're finding that there's a big connection between the students that participate in the STEM academies and their success during the school day. Are you starting to see some of those connections as well? Yeah, I think what helps a lot with STEM too is just building relationships with each other and their peers. Um, I just, you know, they really do learn so much patience and just thinking outside the box too really helps them. And this is your second year in the STEM Academies. What do you like about them? I like how it's fun and it's exciting. And what are you doing today? It seems like you're building something, but you're also working with a computer. We're a building an alligator and we're programming it to open and close its mouth. What is the toughest part about programming? Because that's really big right now. Getting the codes right. Now these STEM academies overlap with what you're learning during the school day. Do you see a connection between those two? Yes. Like sometimes in STEM we're doing coding and now it would help. Like uh, last STEM we were doing coding so it would probably help with this. It is really fun and I learn a lot of stuff that I probably wouldn't have learned if I wasn't in this. It's really cool that how people make all the stuff with like all the gears and everything to make stuff like move. Part of the challenge of being in a STEM academy is learning how to work with other students. Yeah. What are some of the skills that students need to work with one another? Um, have patience with others if like they don't really understand it mm -hmm. and like like not get like really mad when like they did something wrong like and uh, yeah and we'll be taking you into more after-school STEM academies throughout the year to see what the students are doing. Did you know that STEM Academy students are three times more likely to be successful on the math and science state assessments compared to their non-STEM Academy counterparts? They rock! When we come back, we meet another one of our teachers who is just recognized at the White House by the President 
as an outstanding science educator. Science Rocks rolls on in a moment.